Hey everyone, it's Eric Thor here and in today's video we're talking about cognitive personality type as a spectrum. Now, what I've found is that personality type is a lot more flexible and a lot more dynamic than what most people seem to think. Yes, while most people work with static personality descriptions, arguing that all INFJs are the same and all ISTPs are the same and all ENTPs are the same, I tend to take a more individualized approach. To me, personality type is an umbrella term. Now, today, learn about how you can start seeing personality type more as an umbrella term as well, and how you can start to entertain subtypes in a more flexible and dynamic way of looking at personality type. First of all, why should you even want to apply subtypes and more dynamic approach to personality types? I mean, if you believe that everyone is super static and super simple and super stereotypical, everything is super easy. You can type people so quickly and everyone just goes in a box and everything is there and everyone fits and everything is great. However, what I've found is it's not great for long. If you get to know people more closely, you notice that most people break their own stereotypes. You know, most INFJs you meet will sometimes be more outgoing than you'd expect than most INFJs you'd meet would be sometimes more spontaneous or more open to adjust than what you'd normally expect. The same goes for every single personality type. So the spectrum or umbrella term approach works a lot better in the longer perspective. So imagine you're an INFP and imagine you're, or imagine that you're trying to type an INFP. What is the spectrum and what are the subtypes and what variations exist within the INFP spectrum? Well, how I do it is I imagine the INFP being a circle and I imagine there being four scores in this circle. So four different areas you can land on in this circle. What I've found is that some INFPs are more naturally ambiverted. Of course, it's so simple. Some INFPs are better at using their extroverted cognitive functions like extroverted intuition or extroverted thinking. That means they're more quick paced, that means they're more outgoing, and that means that they're more social. Other INFPs might be, for example, more sensory than you'd expect. That means they're not just daydreamers that sit and imagine in their own room different ideas without ever doing anything. No, some INFPs are actually good at going out into the world and meeting people and having real life experiences. And that doesn't necessarily make them an ISFP. Similarly, some INFPs might be more intelligent, more logical, or better at critical thinking that you, than you might expect. Some of them are actually highly intelligent and really good at applying logic in their judgment and in order to determine solid values. That doesn't necessarily make them, however, INTPs and they still have strong value systems. Finally, some INFPs you meet might be more judging, more goal-oriented, more disciplined, than what you normally expect. And that, of course, once again comes from their capacity to use introverted sensing and extroverted thinking and their judging functions. So, your personality type depends on your capacity to use and wield these different cognitive functions and your ability to move on this spectrum. So, some people will find themselves being more introverted, some more intuitive, some more sensory, and that's all normal and that's all healthy. It's healthy that you have your own individualized approach to type. That means you're learning. You are having your own experiences of your personal type. You're making your own decisions and you have free will and you're taking your own actions and deciding how you want to live and how you want to develop and work on yourself. I can only applaud you if you learn to become more outgoing as an introvert or if you learn to become more sensory as an intuitive. That's a sign of development. In fact, the more developed we become, the more difficult we become to type. When we start looking at it, what you'll notice is, contrary to popular belief, the most outgoing introverts are not the introverts that are constantly draining themselves to interact with the outer world. On the contrary, what I've found is the INFPs that are the most comfortable with social interaction are the INFPs that are the best at setting boundaries in social settings. INFPs that are more outgoing are also better at saying no and taking time to rest and recharge. And because they take more time to rest and recharge, they have more energy for social interaction. Similarly, an INFP that is better at applying their ideas in the real world and taking action is usually better at taking action because they're better at honoring their own intuition. They trust their ideas and imagination and they trust it enough to make decisions and to go out and do things instead of overthink it. 
Similarly, the INFPs with the strongest value systems, the strongest introverted feeling, also tend to have the strongest extroverted thinking. And the natural reason for this is that when INFPs honor their values and who they are and their own identity, they also seek and aspire to competence, effectiveness, and principles. They seek to decide to live in a way that will effectively meet their values and their moral beliefs. And of course, an INFP that is more adaptable and allows themselves more time to play around with new ideas is also going to have more energy to structure and organize their surroundings and to engage in and control their work and how they do things. So the best way to develop yourself and to improve on yourself is to learn to honor and respect yourself the way you are. When you look at yourself, you might notice that I'm pretty good at setting boundaries and I'm pretty good at being outgoing or I'm pretty good at taking alone time as an extrovert. However, you might notice that you're bad at allowing yourself space to play. You might find yourself that you're overworked or you might find that you are often pushed to do things that you don't really like to do or you might find that you're not honoring yourself or being truly authentic or truly respecting your own feelings. Perhaps you struggle to trust your intuition. Everyone tends to have and develop and specialize in some way. And that means that they tend to specialize in a way that allows them to express certain sides of themselves at the expense of others. And that's why subtypes are a thing. Subtypes occur when we allow ourselves to specialize in a certain area of development while we push away or ignore or avoid another. So perhaps you're allowing yourself to be outgoing, but <laughs> refusing to allow yourself time to play and have fun. Perhaps your outgoingness comes from being very conscientious and from pushing yourself very hard. Or perhaps you'll find that your creativity and your ability to explore new ideas comes from the fact that you have very uh, strong value system, but that you're not good at honoring logic or thinking critically about the situation. So a subtype is a result of asynchronous development. And an asynchronous development is a development in a particular area at the expense of another. And when we have development in a particular area, it's like our upper arm or left arm is a lot heavier and a lot stronger than our right arm. And that means when we swing around in life and do things, this one is gonna be a lot easier to use and that one's gonna be a lot more difficult to use. And that means we tend to struggle to have a balanced life and interaction. One day we're great and another day when we're met with challenges that build on and bank on the wrong skills, skills that we haven't developed or put any points into, uh, we'll find ourselves struggling. So the task you'll want to learn is subtype switching. Now, if you want to learn more about subtype switching and how to develop cognitive flexibility and synchronous development, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.